Welcome my culture crew. Today we're headed to outer space with the legendary Kathy Woods. Maybe we can get Chamath and Elon to come along for the ride as well. And the reason I'm making this video is because one of our subscribers, Michael Hanna, he brought it up to my attention that Kathy's working on this project that's gonna be debuting later this year. So I did some digging and he's 100% right. But before we get started, if you're new here, my name is Lewis and I love making these videos to help you make money in stocks and cryptocurrency. So for most of you, you're not familiar with Kathy Woods and her ARK Invest Fund. Her ARK Invest Funds are famous for bringing back humongous returns. Just in 2020 alone, her legendary innovation fund ARK brought back 170% to her investors, guys. That is incredible numbers. And because of her fabulous track record, this new ETF, which she's labeled the ARK X Fund, is probably gonna do the same. It's probably gonna blow up. So she's gonna be dividing her investments into four different categories. Let me explain to you what she has in mind. First, it's going to be orbital aerospace. So orbital aerospace is basically companies that are involved in satellites and launch vehicles. Then she's gonna have suborbital aerospace, which are gonna be companies that are specializing in drones air taxis and electric aviation vehicles i don't know about you but that smells like tesla <laughs> i think she's just creating another fund so she can invest more into tesla because i did hear about a rumor that tesla might be innovating a, a, some kind of an air taxi in the next few years who knows maybe if they get that battery technology down right this might be a definite possibility Next, she would like to invest into enabling technologies. These are companies that work on artificial intelligence, robotics, 3D printing, materials, and energy storage. This now sounds a little bit like Nano Dimensions. If you guys aren't familiar with it, the ticker symbol is NNDM. She's a humongous fan of that. And energy storage, again, it sounds like Tesla, guys. So Tesla might, again, be part of her ETF funds. I really do think that it fits these categories perfectly. And the last category is aerospace beneficiary, which are companies that stand to benefit from aerospace activities, including agriculture, internet access, global positioning systems, construction and imaging. So these are all humongous industries, guys, that she wants to tap into. And if you are looking to also increase or expand your investment horizons, this might be a good one. But let's continue to see what companies are actually going to benefit from this the most. What companies might be thrown into this pie? Well, I'm so glad that uh, this was brought to my attention because it gave me the opportunity to see some companies that really weren't on my radar. But after doing the research, I'm really excited to bring this to your attention. But before we get into that, I just want to explain to you that Kathy's ETF is not the first space ETF that's ever been created. There's actually a few of them, and I did some research on three just because I want to see what the performance of these ETFs have been over the last 12 months. And I'm sad to report that these ETFs really haven't done well at all. So now I'm going to talk to you about some of the individual companies that might be included in here. In order to follow along with me, hit the link down below in the description for the Weeble app so you guys can get four free stocks valued at at least $21 when you deposit $100. Bucks. So now let's get started with the first company. The first company is probably the most obvious one. It is Virgin Galactic. Uh, Richard Branson's company, this is a SPAC that came around in 2020. And I'm very really saddened to say that I actually owned this company last year. I bought it at $18, but I felt that the company was still too far away and it was going to be almost kind of like dead money for the next year or two. So I sold out of that position to buy into something more profitable. So when I went back in to look at it, guys, the stock is at like $33. I could have almost 2x my money from that time. And that's why I always tell people, do not sell when you have conviction for something. Just be patient. Unfortunately, I didn't follow my own advice on that, but now I learned my lesson. So this company is going to be included in that ETF. I can almost say with 90%, 95% conviction that it's probably going to be in there. And because of that, a lot of other people think the same. And because of that, the stock jumped up 20% yesterday. I'm sure the stocks are gonna come back down a little bit you know, after this whole hype has calmed down, but it's still a really good one to keep on your horizon, guys, because if it does get included, it'll just shoot right back up. The next one I wanna to talk to you about is Maxar Technologies. 
This company is included in all three ETFs that I researched prior to making this video. Not only that, but they also have a contract with NASA that they earned in May of 2019. So I do think that this one has a really good chance to get included. Some other companies that are very likely to be included that specialize in satellites are Iridium Communications. This one I would actually really keep a close eye on guys because they've been up 76% in the last 12 months and they own 66 satellites and they may turn a profit in Q4 which is going to be reported very soon. That's a really good one to even keep in your portfolio just for the heck of it. Uh, other ones that you should keep an eye on are Laurel Space, a Global Star, Orbcom. Orbcom is a really good one too. I did some research on that one to make this video. Didn't think it deserved a bigger piece than what I'm just going to tell you right now. Orbcom trades at about eight bucks. It was four dollars earlier uh, this year, about 11 or 12 months ago. So this one also keep, keep on your radar, even though they're not profitable yet, but they could be profitable very soon, especially if they get a big bump from the ETF, if they get included. But you know me, I left the best one for last. The one I'm going to talk to you about right now is not even included into the stock market just yet. It's a private company by the name of Momentus. Momentus is going to be merging through a SPAC with Stable Road Acquisition Corp. And this is going to be happening in Q1 of this year, 2021. This company actually jumped 26% on the news of the new ETF that Kathy Woods is going to be putting into place. I do think that the price is going to pull back a little bit, especially today. Today's a red day and you might be able to get a good deal. But I do think the price is going to drop down just a little. So you might be asking yourself, what do these people do? Well, they're actually going to be bringing in cargo into outer space and hopefully one day even the moon. Those are their plans and they also have huge relationships with a lot of big companies already. I'll throw some up on the screen right now so you can have a look at that. But I do believe that this one may be included because Kathy has a history of looking at smaller cap companies and helping those companies become mid-sized and large-sized companies. Tesla is you know, one of my perfect examples of that and Nano Dimensions and a whole bunch of other ones that she's involved in. Some of the other companies that may do well and already did well because of the news that Kathy announced earlier this week are defense contractors such as Lockheed Martin and Boeing. As a matter of fact, Lockheed Martin recently purchased an aerospace company, which would probably gain it a spot on Kathy's ETF if she decides to put on these defense contractors. But the safest way for you to get invested into the space industry without having any risk or downside, unless the world comes to an end, is buying Google Alphabet stock. I know what you're thinking, Google is not a space company. Well, that's 100% accurate, but Google does have a ventures side of their business, which means that they go out and they invest in companies such as some of these space companies. And Google back in 2015 invested $900 million into SpaceX, Elon Musk SpaceX. It's almost impossible to buy into that company because it's privately held, but Google was able to do that. And because of that investment, they took 9% ownership of the company. Today, I'm sure it's far less than 9%, but it's still a good exposure to the company. So when SpaceX does hit the market, finally, when it does come out, maybe later on this decade or who knows when, then we will actually see Google stock jump up tremendously. But at the end of the day, Google will always be Google and they'll find a way to be consistently profitable and continue to innovate. And as a matter of fact, Michael brought to my attention that this month they'll be reporting record breaking numbers for the revenue that they made last quarter. So if you guys are into Google and if you think they're going to do well, check it out for yourself and maybe pick up a couple shares. This Tuesday, we're going to be having our first ever investors meetup. If you guys want to be a part of that, hit the first link down below in the description, or I'll be putting a card right above my head. We're going to be talking about how to invest. Even if you're a beginner and you have a little bit of money, it doesn't matter. We're going to get into the 101 and we're going to later on talk about more advanced stuff and how you can plan a good strategy for yourself. So if you're interested in that, please join us next Tuesday at 9 a.m. It's going to cost you very little or next to nothing, guys. So just go ahead and check it out. I'll leave the link down below. And lastly, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it that humongous thumbs up. Share it with anyone who you think needs to see this. And if you want to learn more about what we do, watch one of the videos that's on the screen right now. And I'll see you over there in just a few seconds. Thank you, guys. I love you. And I'll see you next time. Where do keyboards go for a drink? The space bar. Where else?